thank you for taking the time out of your day to uh, check out this presentation today on the MEP Productivity Pack Project Browser Organization. Okay, so first I'm going to start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Joe Labaya. Um, I have been in this industry since 2015. I graduated from ITT Tech uh, around that time frame with a degree in drafting and design technologies. Um, since then, I've worked various jobs within this uh, industry from the design side of the world, working for a consulting firm, to working with a, um, with, with a couple contractors um, doing BDC. So I've got a little bit of a variety, variety of, of, of work. Um, I specialize a little bit more in the low voltage world, but I've worked on um, various projects for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So I've seen kind of a little bit of everything. I'm not an expert at, at, at anything in particular, um, but have quite a bit of time invested in just trying to um, to learn as much as I can, not only about the program, but also about both sides of the industry and um, hitting those deliverables, which we know is the most important thing under the sun. So you guys can see some of the, uh, some of the different projects I've worked on. Um, uh, Milwaukee Bucks Arena, Harry Potter Roller Coaster, Tomo Replacement Hospital, and the Oswego Police Station. So I've, I've gotten a, a different variety of, of projects, and I still to this day, even with um, working with them, uh, with ATG, I get to kind of balance out training, um, doing some consulting work, and then on top of that, doing some project work on design and um, BDC. So um, continuing my uh, growth and skills every day, just like everybody else. And with Revit, we all know that we have to keep kind of pushing that fight because Revit updates and changes and, and everything along those lines each year, as well as the industry keeps updating and pushing forward. And um, it's definitely been, it's been interesting. It's been fun. And we're going to keep kind of moving along and, and seeing what else we can break and make better. So Today's webinar that we're going through, um, just a brief description on what, what this is going to be about. Uh, this will be uh, consist of the MEP3. So this is going to be the latest and greatest MEP3 that just came out. Okay, which um, if some of you guys are not aware, the latest and greatest MEP3 came out in the model year 2019 instead of the previous versions in 2018, 2016, and 2014. So we've added a, an additional year um, because we do still see some architects and engineers who are still sitting on those uh, 2019 uh, model years with some of those projects that have spanned a little longer than traditional. So, but um, what we're going to do uh, with this is this MEP3 user manual, which just holds vital information and workflows um, to, to utilize in the MEP3. So, we're gonna we're gonna kind of dive into some of that information that will be in, in, in the manual, but also uh, you're gonna see that project browser overall. Okay, um, so some of our learning objectives today are just going to uh, be to show how to change and update the project browser uh, organization, as well as uh, discuss some of the best best practices for that project browser organization. And then we're also going to go through what is included in that project browser organization from view sheets and schedules. So and the reason um, we're going to go through the view sheets and schedules is because I've, I've had the, uh, the opportunity to work with several different people who have not necessarily realized that we can, we can adjust more than just a view. Um, organization, we can actually adjust some of the sheet organization as well as some of the schedule organization. So, and that comes about from guys like us who work on the fly and, and basically um, we're, we're getting our training as we're getting our, our projects done. So we're going to go through some of those options there. All right. And again, if you guys have any questions, any concerns, any comments or anything along those lines, feel free, drop a line in the chat. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple of attendees here, um, some additional attendees, and just want to thank everybody for, for showing up and um, taking some time out of your day to, uh, to check out what we're going through. 
All right, so we are going to move into the world of Revit right now. And we're going to take a look at the new project browser organization. So momentarily, uh, we'll be in Revit. Okay, so here is, is Revit 2019. Um, I have uh, version 0.2 up here. Okay, and this is just kind of the entrance, um, the, the basic interface to uh, how we have this updated MEP productivity pack set up here. So stand, standard landing page, um, start of view, one of our sheets. Okay, so for some of you guys who um, who are accustomed to playing with the project browser organization and stuff like that, um, this this should be pretty pretty basic to you. Um, basically, what we're going to see is we're going to see some of the options and everything along those lines um, to what we what we added in here. So it, it is a little bit different for you guys who have utilized the pack in the past. Um, but let's take a look at it right now and see what we have here. All right. So first things first, we're going to end up in the uh, views section of the list here. Okay, so you can see there's been some updated naming conventions. Um, there's been an extra, uh, not I won't say a, a lot of additional options here, but there's been some some additional changes subtly within the actual um, setup here of some of these organizations. So when I started with this um, this updated MEP productivity pack, the view classification dash all disciplines that was set to default when I went into the sample project that we have here and this is also should be default whenever you guys go into the starter project for the MEP productivity pack as well okay so um, just to kind of show you guys some of what what we have for options um, we have we have our view organization by discipline import categories keywords um, model versions uh, not on sheets, which can be vital for some of some of us who are, are looking to uh, to see what may or may not be on a sheet just specifically because we've got way too many views and, and not enough screen to view it. Um, that's always something good to work with. There's also phasing for some some of those projects that you guys see that has uh, different phases and everything that we have to work with. Um, then finally, we do have our series of our disciplines. So disciplines from the overall standpoint of MEP, but then on top of that, we, we break out electrical, we break out fire protection, we break out mechanical, and we break out plumbing. So those are those are some um, view classification options, which is an additional parameter um, embedded in this this uh, project specifically in order for us to be able to um, to organize uh, that that way. So. Um, and then finally, we also have view templates. So as you guys know, the MEP productivity pack comes with a wide variety of view templates that are already uh, created and ready to go for you guys. So um, we have a way to organize that as well, um, this route for your views with view templates. So also let's take a look at sheets just to kind of roll through there. Um, so sheets traditionally in some previous years didn't really have much um, organized there there's just a, a couple small options now you can see we have the standard all naturally that comes with this out of the box rabbit type but then we have the check by option uh, for organization discipline drawn by um, issue date keywords and model version as well um, so those are some options for sheets and then we also have um, schedules as an additional tab that we um, have a couple additional options as well. Um, I believe in model years, the only thing we had in here was the standard default. Um, and I, I do recall in the past playing around and, and kind of building out my own way to to see the schedules just because as we know in the MVP productivity pack, there is a huge long list of schedules. So um, with that long list of schedules, uh, getting through and finding what you're looking for can be a little bit on the uh, challenging side. So there we go there. 
So we're going to, um, I got a question that came up here. Uh, what's the process behind model versions and keywords? Can you give us some examples? Well, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go into uh, keywords and model versions and we're going to take a look and see what this actually is. Okay. Um, so let's take a look here. So model versions, go to edit and then the grouping. So basically with the model versions, um, this is set up by a discipline or a parameter. It looks like they had it in here for model version. Um, and then by family. So let me see. I haven't actually messed with model versions because this is still fairly new to me. Um, it looks to me um, and I had heard a little discussion on this. This is basically giving us information on the 19, uh, on the model itself. So 19.1.0. Um, this would uh, tend to be the actual version of the MEP productivity pack is what it looks like. Um, this is what I'm seeing here. So um, this basically is indicating something along the lines that instead of thinking model version of Revit model year, uh, especially considering how often um, we, we have gotten in a project where we change that. Um, this kind of resembles something more of what um, CTC, uh, the creators of the MEP productivity pack are following. So um, because our model year specifically with, with Revit, when we look up here at the, the very top of our Revit is 2019.2, um, versus kind of how that how it looks like they thought of thought of this whole thing um, looks to be off a, a little bit different. Um, what I will do, let's take a look and see where that parameter is at in here. So we see here uh, when we select the floor plan and we go into the properties palette. What I'm showing is it looks like down here in a, a new field referred to as data, um, we're showing model version. So um, this, it does say 19.1.0. This can be updated and you guys can utilize this field for um, however you guys plan on setting this up. So if you guys, for instance, are working in 2019 and working and moving to 2020, you can play around with this. And then you can see essentially what was created back in uh, your 2019 version versus your 2020 or if you've got situations where we're talking about build numbers and everything like that, you can also work with that as well in adjusting this. Um, this is, it looks like uh, you can key specifically in here, um, which will give you guys um, a little more flexibility in working with the, the model version and working with uh, how you want to set this up. Um, this looks more to me like a BIM management tool um, as opposed to something for the daily user. So let's uh, let's now take a look at keywords and see exactly what keywords are um, and what formulates keywords here. So as I'm going into keywords, I'm seeing it's specifically keywords and then family is how this is organized. So let's see what keywords kind of look like. Um, so Let's go into this 3D view. All right, and um, let's scroll in through here because this looks like something a little bit different as well. Um, keywords down here at the bottom under other, which means this is going to be in the actual view template here. So this looks like another parameter that was added in an additional field. And what I'm seeing here for keywords is basically um, it seems like it dives deeper into um, more of the system type uh, as well as we, we've got like title sheets on here. Um, so we got system. So for some of you guys who are in the uh, low voltage world, system fire protection, or fire alarm, kitchen, elevator, stuff like that. Uh, storm for some of you guys in the plumbing, uh, power systems, uh, so on and so forth. So this this is set up here and it, it's showing that um, the idea behind this will be to organize based upon what subsystem or sub -discipline, like subdiscipline 
um, you would be seeing of, of a specific uh, overall discipline. So your sub-discipline you can see here, uh, for instance, with this is saying for discipline mechanical, mechanical pipings are sub, and then we break this down an additional level, so chilled water. So you guys can organize um, your your drawings uh, or your, all your different views according to this keyword, which is essentially a sub-discipline off of something. So that's that's the idea of how, how this one was put together. Um, and it looks like this can be. So you can key in on this one as well. So when you guys go through your project setup, project setup basically um, you guys can adjust this out however you choose and uh, rename some of these options as it is keyword keywords so on and so forth so um, that could be an option there for you uh, there's definitely some some different um, additional options so here you can see the model version and everything along those lines we have index out here as well um, schedule sort order um, and then that view classification so there have been some some additions to our parameters uh, in order to organize uh, with our, our view templates and, and our property palette in order to make sure this project organization uh, caters as much as possible to being able to uh, organize our projects um, as we've seen the larger the project the uh, the more problems we may have for finding our views. So um, there's also, keep in mind, we still have our import categories here as well. So uh, you can see with the import categories, it's another option. We've got filtering happening here as well. So um, discipline, um, not equal to coordination, and then families equal to floor plan. So if we're looking for just floor plan information, um, we can we can organize that way and then we go in here and, and organize by discipline basically um, so we can see how that changes at this point um, then there's some other ones out here as well um, we can just go back into for some of you guys who haven't seen this um, this is the view classification so i can i can see that there's a filter already set here and this is what um I've utilized on many of occasions, uh, especially when I'm going to either a demo or I'm working on a project or something like that. And it's strictly one one system uh, that, that our company's uh, assigned to or uh, contracted for. Um, we'll just set it to where we've got uh, electrical and then we'll dive into the electrical. Um, I've used this on VDC projects. That's where I use this the most is um, going through view classification electrical one more when we're uh, set up for just electrical um, BBC work and doing all that coordination, as opposed to seeing all the mechanical and plumbing uh, views as well. So this is definitely an option here, and you can see view classification family and subdiscipline, how we organize that. So we'll go through this. Um, there is the option here for the all discipline. So the all discipline will basically, um, will give you some of those, those abilities here. So I'll show you how this works. So this is all discipline, and we're going to see all the different disciplines in some of these uh, views that we have out here. Okay, um, yeah, I'll actually minimize that one. Now, when I go to swap and drop this to electrical, you can see now instead of having everything there, we now have electrical power site symbols and systems and we have our lighting and stuff like that so um, same thing you move this over from electrical to mechanical now you can see the fire protection the hvac uh, mechanical piping plumbing some of that aspect um, and then if we swap this to plumbing we've got those options out here as well so plumbing um, general plumbing there should be a uh, slab penetration and stuff out here some hvac stuff um, for coordination purposes, obviously under the coordination field. So it definitely helps kind of organize and see some of what, what is out here. Um, for some of you guys who are a little bit newer in the world of understanding the organization and, and who are 
struggling a little bit to find where your drawings or where your views or where whatever you brought into Revit may have magically disappeared to. Um, just kind of keep in mind um, the way that I utilize my browser organization when I'm doing my project setup and setting all this stuff up. I try to make sure, so if I'm working out of uh, my disciplines here, um, I try to make sure I know how my views are, are organized. Um, I use a lot of view templates. I use a lot of work sets. Um, I, I utilize the, the browser organization pieces in all my setup. Um, and I utilize some filters and stuff like that. So um, whenever I create something such as a section view or a large plan or something along those lines, I, I like to apply my view template um, right as uh, I'm working with that view, okay? Um, and by understanding that browser organization before we go into that actual setup there, um, making sure I know my hierarchy is going to be uh, view classification, view classification. Then we're going to come to family, so family. Um, and then our subdiscipline, plumbing. I can now see where something may be. So if I'm in a view and I'm not sure where it's at, I can actually go into to one of these views um, that may be floating out here somewhere and actually kind of trace where I'm looking. So view classification, construction docs. I'm going to look for family and type. I know the family is going to be floor plans. So naturally floor plans. And then HVAC is going to be my sub-discipline, which is right here. So HVAC. And then you can see under that is where we actually have our views. So that's how I, I tend to, uh, how I set my projects up, making sure I have an understanding of my project browser. Um, and then making sure as I, I go and, and set my views up for the project, uh, for all the disciplines, I'm um, taking care of that information in any of my um, current view templates, um, as well as any views that may not have a view template. And then any view templates that I create on the fly, I make sure I take care of that right away. It makes it a lot easier for organization in the uh, long run. Okay. Um, also, when I'm going through training, so for a lot of new people, especially new people who um, may be coming fresh out of school or may not have actually utilized the AutoCAD world and have mainly utilized um, just a little touch of Revit or no Revit at all, um, I like to go through this process of browser organization and where to find where your views um, magically disappear to early in the process of training, especially when we start talking about pulling sections and we start talking about um, adding in large plans and elevations and stuff like that, um, just because it, it helps them keep track of, of where their stuff is going because they're, they're going a mile a minute because of how, how much information is staring at them and that, that they're working through. So this is, this is definitely a key piece of information that I like to, uh, to start with, with, with uh, the newer class of people coming into the industry. Okay, also, now once we get out of this project uh, browser organization for our views, if we come down here to schedules, we can see we've got a, a series of schedules here, okay? Um, and we can take a look at what we have for options when it comes to the different types of schedules and we can see how many schedules actually are sitting out here. So if we come into schedules here, I'm going to uh, right click on, on schedules. And then here's browser organization here in the middle of this uh, nice big list of stuff. And you're gonna see now that um, we have discipline checked here. So that's our option. And when we go in and we, we edit it or, or look at this, we can see now um, the organization starts at the discipline for hierarchy, subdiscipline, and then view classification um, is how we've got this organized. Um, there's also keywords as well. So if we go into keywords, you can see kind of the similar aspect. This one has keywords, um, which are going to be those subdisciplines of subdisciplines, um, as well as the uh, subdiscipline and then the view classification um, is how this this one is organized. And then we've also got model versions as well. 
uh, as we went over with the, the view options, model version something key in there also, and then view template also, uh, as well. Um, view templates are utilized in the MEP productivity pack for schedules as well. Um, helps with the, uh, the or, well, organization and presentation of the actual uh, schedules themselves. So um, if I move this to keywords, you can see there's definitely a, a bit of a change here. So um, you can see like, for instance, here's notes. Here's a lot of different information on here. So if you're struggling to find something, um, and I've seen people do this in the past, just kind of keep through this until you find what you're looking for. And um, that will get you guys kind of set up to see what, what is what and hopefully narrow down what you're, what you're looking for specifically. So, um, and then default uh, would be the discipline with the new MEP productivity pack. So, a um, lot of great schedules out here. Um, there have been more added. So, uh, if some of you guys aren't necessarily 100% aware of, of, of the MEP productivity pack and schedules and such like that, um, the schedules um, complement the uh, content that we have in here. So all the different families and, and the elements and stuff like that. Um, they help help with the different scheduling options. There's also um, a separate container file or container model for um, schedules and drafting views as well. So you'll see a, a browser organization in there also um, that will help kind of align where things are at also so you can bring that them across. Okay, so. so you want to add a discipline on the fly. Um, so let's kind of go into this real quick. Um, I have a question about adding a discipline on the fly. So this here, this is going to be our, our discipline option. One thing about Revit is um, if you go into back, let's go dive into that real quick. Um, here we go. We'll hop in here. So for disciplines, um, disciplines are hard hardwired in, into Revit. So we can't change this. This is just what it is. Um, so that's why with within our browser organization and um, some of the parameters that, that have been created, um, we have the sub-discipline, which comes standard with Revit, where we can key this information in there as well as these other options. So keyword, model version, index, um, and view classification. Um, that's how we, we utilize um, Revit in order to get around not being able to add disciplines. So the only discipline options we have here for Revit are architecture, structure, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and coordination. That's all Revit will allow for these actual disciplines we can't go in there and, and mess with those. So we have to find alternative ways. So if you're looking to set up a project that, that may um, not necessarily follow these disciplines, uh, my suggestion would be to uh, work off a sub-discipline. Um, if you have view classification, utilize view classification, um, some of those different options there in order to be able to key that information in there to um, start that organizational process for your views, your sheets, and all your schedules. Okay, so went through some of that. So let's go take a, a look down now at the sheets as well. So sheets is that other option that we have out here um, for our view organization. You can see some of the different sheets that come with this. Okay, so there's, there's quite a few sheets. It's not all decked out or built out 100%, but got some of those options here. Now, if we right click on sheets and we go to browser organization, um, we can see now that we, we've got a series of options here. So if I go into discipline, which is our default, uh, we can see that by the grouping and sorting here, this is just organized by, by discipline. Okay. Um, essentially, when you, uh, okay, hang on a second. so discipline basically 
uh, right down in this general neck of the woods right here um, and other. So we, we don't necessarily have a view template for our sheets, but we have this other field here where we have some of those options. And um, this tends to be the, the common way I see um, models organized is utilizing discipline. Um, and on occasion, I'll see sub-discipline out here as well uh, from some of the different um, architect architecture firms and MEP firms around the, the industry uh, with how they organize. Um, you can also come in here in the way we, we added some additional options. We can do the check by, which a little bit, a little bit different. Um, and you can see here, nothing really has been adjusted. So um, you can utilize that as an option. There's also the issue date as well. Um, and this tends to be more, more designed and more set up um, for say those bid managers taking a look to see what's gone out and everything along those lines. Um, you see all the different dates and everything here and what we're actually seeing. So um, this is a quick, quick way to get kind of a, an idea of what you may have sent out in DD phase and you're coming up to, uh, up to CD phase and, and you, you need to make sure that you've got certain sheets that may not have had title block work done um, or um, revision work done or anything along those lines. Gives you that option to kind of see um, what, what is what, what is out there. So depending on what you guys have answered for questions within there. So also there's keywords and model versions as well. Um, I still tend to stick with the discipline. Um, and if I have to, um, depending on like the size of, of the project, um, I'll go into that sub-discipline world. Um, I did recently have to go into that sub-discipline world uh, with a, a recent project I was working on, um, specifically because we, we put together a design project on one system, and on that one system, we produced 97 sheets, specifically because um, we start we, we got up to um, letter J in the alphabet in the areas of this building, just because of how big it was. So um, and that was the condensed version. So having that model discipline there um, definitely helped uh, organize us a little bit more to kind of keep everything in line just because of how much stuff was was floating out there for our different disciplines. So when you figure things like plumbing, uh, for instance, you've got your your domestic water, your 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 storm lines, and then your sanitary sewer um, times say 20, 25 different uh, views for a three, four story building. And all of a sudden, you start to build up pretty quick. So um, definitely great ways to, to organize yourself. Um, also too, when, one thing I like to tell everybody is when you're, you're going through your browser organization with your views, your sheets and your schedules, um, with the MEP productivity pack, it's great that we have all these options in there, um, but definitely take a, take a look and find what best works for you guys. Okay, and if you don't like how we have, have some of this set up here, or if you guys need another option, um, definitely go in there, create yourself another option, edit these down, make them yours. Because um, when you do that, and everybody in your firm understands kind of how you guys do things, and how all this stuff goes together, it makes life a lot easier. So um, I see I have another question here. What is the index parameter being used for? Take a look. So index parameter. Um, index parameter. Let me take a look here and see if I can find something. Uh, looking to see if I have it in any one of these. So as of right now, um, I don't see index sitting out here in our view template. Um, let me see if there's anything. No, nothing there. And then 
we get in the schedules, spring schedules, new template, that's in here. No, I don't see it anywhere in there neither. So um, as of right now, um, I'm not 100% sure what the index uh, option will be used for. Um, my guess is that they're developing something at this point right now. And um, traditionally, when you think about indexing, um, the way I think about indexing is, is basically indexing for um, for the architect firms with sending out uh, your, your project. So um, that may be what, what that is for. I've had some projects where we had to index a, a little bit um, differently than how the model was set up. So we would we would index to to say 35% DDs were sent out, 100% um, CDs, addendum one, addendum three, CB, um, whatever we're working on at that point, um, and utilize the index for that feature. But again, um, I've seen it used other ways as well. So. Um, as of right now, this is this doesn't have anything necessarily in here, so it, it is free to utilize. So I mean, you guys you guys could uh, go through and key in what you'd like and have that as an alternative option for your organization um, options here within the project browser. All right, so just kind of recap some of what we went through today. Uh, we did take a look and um, we saw how to change and update the, the project browser a little bit. We discussed what the options were there. Um, we discussed some a little bit of practices. Um, definitely make sure practice wise you guys make it your own. That's that's the one thing that, that I like to encourage people um, is make it make it your own, make it useful for you guys, uh, especially some of some of you firms that are are set with um, kind of how you're how you guys traditionally do things. Uh, definitely make make it work for you guys within your firm um, and then um, other great practices um, set up those different options and everything like that to see what may be on sheets what may not um, because um, leverage leverage your project browser organization um, as best you can and as much as you can to make sure when you're delivering um, there's just less repetitive work and, and everything's kind of set up and, and moving out nice and clean and clear and, and less likely to, to see something return back. Um, that's what I like to do. It's worked well for me in the past. And as I've, I've grown and as I've seen more options, it's given me more, more options in my tool belt in order to play around and make this kind of mine. So, um, and then also, um, go through what is included in the project browser organization for view sheets and schedule. So we kind of dove into some of that information today. Um, and again, if you guys have questions or if you guys want uh, further demonstrations, if you want more information on the project browser, um, definitely feel free to uh, get in touch with us. Um, get in touch with myself and drop questions out here. Um, also, because this is the new MEP productivity pack that just recently came out, um, we definitely um, we're doing a lot of demos. We've got a lot of a lot of interest in um, what has changed, what is new, um, and what updates are here. So, for some of you guys that have utilized this in the past, you can definitely see that there, there's some minor touches, some some different changes here, just in the uh, the, the browser organization. Uh, there's also families and everything along those lines. So just feel free to get in touch with your sales guys and, and um, definitely uh, reach out to them. We'll, we can set something up. Um, I know I've got a, a, a few um, meetings and, and demos coming up over the next uh, couple weeks. So um, I'd love to hear from you guys either way. So uh, I would like to thank everybody for their time today. And um, definitely thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to uh, sit and attend this webinar and um, ask your questions and, and be here. So um, again, if there's anything I can do um, or anything you guys have questions about, feel free to get in touch with myself or get in touch with any, any one of our sales group here at ATG USA.
Thank you, everybody.